what we've got is a description of how the cell controls its genes. Now, this is obviously not DNA, but the nylon thread, that white little thread there, is meant to represent the DNA in our cells, each cell having six feet of DNA. And of course, it's not flailing around tangled up, it's actually bundled up very neatly in what you would probably call a spool. We call these things histones, and they're made up of protein, and that's here represented on the screen by the black uh, objects. So this is really what makes up a chromosome, and the DNA is bundled up. And if it's tightly bundled, those genes in those bundles are switched off, often for life, but sometimes when you need them, they come on. But that pattern of bundles and then loops determines the what we call the gene expression, genes that are off and then genes that come on. So why is that important to have the right pattern of gene expression? Well, it's essential for life because pretty much all of our cells have the same genes. So what makes a brain cell different from a skin cell, different from a liver cell, it's this packaging that you see on the screen. This is what tells a nerve cell to be a nerve cell. And importantly, to stay a functional nerve cell for up to 110 or maybe even longer years in some people. But what we think is going wrong, as I'll explain, is that this packaging gets disrupted. As though, you know, when you sometimes you go fishing and you cast the line, it just explodes and you end up with a real mess. We think that's what's happening to our genome. So in the next slide, what I'm gonna show you is what this kind of looks like. This is more of a realistic representation. So now we've zoomed down in through the nucleus, we've swum down to the chromosome, and we can actually see the DNA molecule now, and that's the double helix in blue. And so there are about a couple of loops that go around these packaging proteins called histones, shown in green. And what you notice, or should notice, is that there are these little tags, these little worms that are on these proteins that bundle the DNA. Those tags are really important. They tell the, the, the cell whether to bundle up the DNA or to loop it out and turn the genes on. And so the, that's how the cell controls whether a cell is gonna be a nerve cell or a liver cell or something else. And it turns out that these tags that are attached either to these green proteins, histones, or literally to the DNA itself, these, these are called methyls that attach to the DNA, we can measure those and use those as a biological clock because they occur very predictably as we get older. And so in the next slide, what you'll see is that there's what's called the Horvath clock. So I have a, a really good friend at UCLA, um, University of California in Los Angeles. And Steve, Professor Steve Horvath has discovered, uh, along with his colleagues, that if you measure those chemical tags that attach to the DNA, these methyls, the so-called methyls, um, you can read them all and then you can build a clock. And that's how I can tell how old you are biologically. I could take your, your cells, measure those little tags that are accumulating and see how, how unraveled your DNA is over time. And it turns out people who live healthy, eat well, exercise, are younger than their biological or their chronological age, their normal age. Uh, and those that smoke, become obese, don't exercise, tend to have an older biological age. Now, there are exceptions, of course. You can be lucky and be born with exceptional longevity genes, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But even if you've got great longevity genes, that's not the only thing that matters. It turns out that our longevity is only 20% determined by your parents. The rest is how you live your life, which is actually great news. It means that we all have a chance to basically level the playing field and live into our 90s and 100 and beyond in a healthy state. But it does take discipline, of course.